All right, hello guys. Third time, fourth time. I don't know what time we're on. Hopefully this is the term, the call that actually works. We've been bouncing back and forth because of a troll in our first call. So this is the April 30th growth call for BISC. Would like to cover the following, some announcements, a summary of April growth, trading activity and volume, and then growth efforts across the world, Latin America and China. We've got a couple of people on the line to uh, talk us through those, and then we'll end with cycle 13 priorities, things we want to get done in this cycle. So announcements. I don't think Fabio is on. If you are, please speak up. But um, he's going to be hosting a meetup in Copenhagen. Of course, it's going to be virtual because of the global situation. Um, and the idea is going to be to get people to onboard people to BISC, show them how it works, and also sign payment accounts. So I think he's going to be working with Revolut mainly, and he'll do trades, as I understand it, in real time with folks who who show up and uh, sign their accounts, so that in a month from now they can do trades, bigger trades, on BISC without the 0.01 Bitcoin buying limit. So. Uh, I'm sure he'd have more to say about it if he was on, but uh, I think it's a pretty cool experiment, cool way to get people onboarded. I know seeding uh, signed accounts, even in markets like the Euro is, is not easy. There aren't too many. It's something that people complain about a lot. So I'm looking forward to see how this turns out. Yeah, so I think more there's more details on that link, the meetup link, and there's also a tweet from the BISC account that has this link and some more information if you want to check it out. Earlier today, uh, there was a 1.3.4 release. If you're a contributor, this is an important release. And well, it's important for everybody because it, it solves some issues that we had with ghost offers. Um, but if you're a contributor, it's also particularly important because it uh, fixes some issues with calculating vote results. So some of you guys might have noticed that when the uh, cycle 12 ended, you may not have seen results or you might not have seen your uh, issued BSQ. Uh, this should not be solved in one, one, three, four and everything should be normal. Third thing on this announcements page, bitcoinhaving.com. So this is a an effort that Bitcoin Magazine is putting on kind of as a uh, I don't want to, I don't know if stop gap is the right term, but they weren't able to put on Bitcoin 2020 as planned. And of course, with the having uh, coming along in about what, like a week now, uh, they're planning a 21 hour extravaganza of presentations and talks and all kinds of things virtual. And this is going to, this is going to be having a 30 second spot played throughout this event. So it should be shown to people all over the world, hopefully many thousands of people if plans go well. And uh, our designer, Pedro, has been working on this and the draft animations look absolutely killer. Really excited to see it go, uh, to see people to, to see people see it and react to it. I think it's a really good message to be putting out with all the other services now, uh, flipping to KYC or shutting down, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, last thing to mention, uh, well, this will come up when we when we look at volume, but uh, of course, since the last call, the security incident was a major occurrence. As a result, we uh, folks have put together a security team. So this, uh, you can look at the uh, this GitHub issue for more details. But basically, several. Uh, highly trusted contributors have come together. We've uh, designated uh, one, at least one person to do a really full-fledged, thorough security audit, and look at all aspects of the trade protocol and make sure that they are as robust as possible. The kick kickoff call for this is, uh, I don't know if we have a date for it yet, but it should be coming up soon. And you can see further updates on that GitHub issue. All right, so that's all I have for announcements. Anything else, any, anyone else, anything else, anyone else 
on the call would like to cover before we get into April results. All right. Results for April were, I think, overall pretty good, considering that we had a an unprecedented 24-hour, basically, block on trading. Uh, we had incredible momentum coming in from March. It's the all-time record for trading activity on the network in March, with over 3,000, almost six, almost 3,600 trades on the network. We hit about 2,800 trades this month. Altcoin trades, as you can see in the in the graph, were pretty much the same. Uh, it's the fiat trades that took a bit of a dip, which, to be honest, is a bit concerning because fiat is typically the, most, the strongest uh, element of BISC. But uh, hopefully, we'll see that number recover as we go forward. Uh, one thing to note here is that the trade size is what, oh, okay. So uh, the total volume in terms of Bitcoin volume was about the same in April as it was in March, uh, which I found a bit surprising considering the big drop off in fiat volume. Uh, but this difference is explained by bigger altcoin trade size. So the, the average altcoin trade size in April was about 0.65 Bitcoin. Whereas in March, it was about, I think it was like 0 0.58, 0 0.59. So it was about 10% bigger in, um, in, in April. And trade size is something that I want to focus on going forward. We'll talk more about that in, uh, in a few minutes. But uh, I know we have some people on the call. I don't know what your time limits are like, but I think we should, we should get to this global growth in Latin America and China. I don't know if Lewis is on the call. Lewis is the one who's spearheading the Latin American growth effort, but I do know Rick Radish XN is, is, is the one who's been working a lot with, or spearheading a lot of the Chinese efforts. Would you like to talk about your experience? Yes, yes. You've gotten and, and other stuff? Yes, I have a lot about uh, Chinese issued, and I've write some report about Chinese and uh, after I have uh, work on Chinese issues, there is some drawback or some f further effort I would like to share with you guys. Uh, firstly, the Chinese user was very curious about the convenience. And uh, that's very important to BISQ. Some Chinese ape, like uh, some phone ape, and uh, not, they will require some, uh, you know, uh something that uh, sh they shouldn't have required and uh, they read it, all the information they, they ha you have on the phone so but uh, that wasn't something that chinese user care about so the privacy is not something the all the chinese user care about so hopefully there will be one day some bisq can go to a mobile ape and uh, the website ape if possible BISQ can have a website ape, and uh, that will be definitely help for the convenience convenience part. And uh, some Chinese user, after I talk to them, they will say that BISQ is something that is a little difficult, and uh, they would not like to try it. That's that's the first stuff I would like to talk. And uh, the second thing says about the guide nest. The guide nest is it's a big issued that uh, if there is a lot of people who are asking me for problems they have faced and uh, it seems that they cannot use BISQ very, very clearly and uh, clearly they all need help and uh, the guidance can be a problem and uh, uh, I, I think, I believe I can have some day to write some, you know, guidance, uh, some, write some something about how to work uh, BISQ in China and uh, all this stuff, uh, if possible, upload on BISQ's website. And uh, more importantly, if possible, can give a Chinese user some, you know, like a customer service, if possible. And uh, they have all, all facing some kind of a problem. And uh, I don't know why they have 
such a kind of problem. And some some problem is really easy, and uh, they, they also need to work work that out, and uh, they need some you know guidance. And uh, the third thing, because of the Chinese Great War, and some Chinese user cannot uh, get the access to uh, BISQ, and uh, if possible, the there can be a way to arrange some proxy and uh, to you know give Chinese some U Chinese user a free line to access BISQ and uh, uh, that will be a great you know like an advertisement for Chinese user. You will see uh, this ape is really friendly to them and the guidance part is very important. I think BISQ can focus on it and uh, after that. The translation part is also important, and uh, it seems that uh, uh, Wiki and uh, some older version of BSQs need to be uploaded after I uh, after I talk with the translator. They have uh, update some translation and uh, fix some mistake, uh, but there is still some mistake remaining, and uh, hopefully can be worked out in the future and. Uh, for the future part, I think, uh, I believe that uh, if uh, BISQ want to take the cake of Chinese market, I think we can develop the mobile app and I believe the mobile app will be uh, online soon, right? And uh, if possible, run some aid on Chinese Bitcoin website like Hobby or other kind of a website and uh, I figure out on this kind of a website, they will be really convenient to Chinese user. And at some time, they will like to, you know, exchange their privacy to to its convenience. And uh, if and uh, if some uh, if BSQ can have a mobile one, I believe it will be really really convenient for all of Chinese users and. Uh, Lot of lot of many Chinese user will have a you know have a computer to figure all things, and uh, uh, I I believe if we want to you know extend the Chinese market, find some user maybe on uh, not only in Telegram channel and uh, nowadays tem Telegram channel are facing some challenge about the Chinese government's control. So I believe maybe on some Chinese stock website and uh, to find some user and uh, update and or release to the mobile BSQ mobile as soon as possible will be a way and uh, if possible I can keep adding some you know purchase for the future and uh, do more development that's almost all about the Chinese future development I will see it again the convenience the guidance and the translation basically the three part I see. Well, thanks a lot for that. That was uh, was good feedback. Uh, I think, I mean, <laughs> the mobile app is something I think everybody wants. It's it's certainly you know it sounds important for the Chinese market. It's also in Latin America and and pretty much everywhere. This would see yes. just huge growth if if it could be more accessible with the mobile yes. app. Uh, that is, it's a really ambitious goal. It's something that we need the API for, and the API, my understanding is that it's being worked on right now more than it ever has been. So there's progress there. Uh, and I don't know if I can give you a time frame, but it's it's in progress. And you know, hopefully we see something happen okay. sooner rather than later. Um, as far as what you mentioned, the second item for guidance, is yes. that is that more like how to use BISC or is it more like getting BISC running with the, the yes. special aspects of, of, of the Great Wall? Uh, some some users don't, don't know about the uh, usage of DAO and uh, some user will ask me to how to, you know, the deposit part and uh, some user cannot run it uh, properly and uh, there's a lot of the issue we can, you know, Give them a guidance to use BSQ in China, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, yes. so going forward, what would you say is 
what would you say? So <laughs> translations need to be improved, which you, yes. you, you covered, and maybe some more documentation, videos, things like that. Yes, yes, I believe so. And uh, some translation, some older version translation is seems like out of date, and uh, we should up, update it. On the website or on in the BISC software? Uh, software and. Okay. Uh, if possible, wiki can be translation too. I believe that will track some Chinese user too. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically my part about Chinese development. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So that's uh, a lot of good feedback there. Now for Latin America, I don't know, is Lewis, are you on? Are you online? Don't think I see him. So Lewis Antonio Craig is, uh, he made a proposal on the growth repository a week or two ago about spearheading a growth effort in Latin America, particularly Mexico and Argentina. Um, both of which, as I understand it, are very strong markets for Bitcoin. And according to him also possibly altcoins which is uh, something that could be good for BISC volume. So, um, I mean, his effort, it sounded mostly like a uh, social effort through Facebook and blogging and a couple other channels, Telegram, along with some market making where, where appropriate. So we've been talking on the GitHub issue for the past several days. I think we're in a good place. Seems like could probably get going with what he's proposed. Uh, so yeah, that's, I don't have much else to say there. It's mostly something that he's been heading up. We have a budget established. We have a basic, uh, I don't know if roadmap is the right word, but a basic plan for what he will do and what he wants to accomplish. At the moment, it's going to be a three month trial. So, you know, uh, we can, uh, evaluate how things went in one, two, three months, and if they're worth carrying on. So that's that. So Latin America, China, we'll get some better documentation in place for that. Look, we'll also look into translating uh, the the wiki. So Huey and Eminem both mentioned this in the chat. Uh, the wiki can be translated. There's nothing stopping us from doing it, but it does get a bit messy. Most wiki implementations I've seen have a subdomain for other languages, which is probably the best way of doing it. I'm not sure if we'll, have, if we'll be able to do that right now off the bat, but we can uh, we can look into it. Uh, I know Spanish, I know Lewis also wants to do some Spanish translations for the wiki. So we might have to figure out a way to do this sooner rather than later. But yeah, I appreciate both your efforts, both you know Radish and, uh, and, uh, and Lewis. Uh, it's both okay. exciting markets. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be in touch. And all right, so priorities. Last thing I want to cover for the cycle upcoming, well, I guess current cycle, cycle 13. Website updates. I feel like I've been saying this for a long time, but this new getting started page really is coming. We had a, a whole new series of videos uploaded a week or two ago uh, on front to back top to bottom, how do you get started on BISC? How do you pick a payment method? What is account signing? How do you make an altcoin payment account? Make offer, take offer. There's even a bird's eye view video uh, that a lot of people seem to like. The whole series seems to be very well received so far from what I've been hearing. And it's this exact series that's gonna go on this new getting started page. Uh, past few days, I've been, well, I sat down to make the getting started page and then I realized once again, that the website is in absolutely horrible condition. So I've just been pushing like commit after commit of optimizations and getting rid of just legacy code that's making everything slow and hard to work on. So when that's in better shape, which you know next day or two hopefully it will be, then we can start on the getting started page and push that out finally. And the two other things that I want to focus on for this cycle are increased, well, for this cycle and probably for future cycles, the near 
midterm future is increasing trade sizes and reporting. So I'll start with reporting because that's, uh, I have other two other slides for trade sizes that I want to get to. Uh, reporting is going to be a, a longer effort where I want to have like issuance and um, burn for the Dow and like top initiatives and top achievements all just on one page. So anybody who wants to see the state of the BISC Dow can just go there and see it. Ideally on the website and the stats uh, on the stats page, just replace that with real time statistics on the state of the Dow. But to get there, we're gonna have to do a few different things first. And the first thing, I guess the most obvious simple thing is making compensation requests parsable. So the, the data that you get right now from the, from the BISC software tells you all about burn, but nothing about issuance. I mean, you can get issuance, the total issuance uh, by going to the, whatever the, the DAO screen and the, the governance section, but um, programmatically, you can't really get any details on, on issuance. And that, that will have to come from GitHub compensation requests. And in order to make that just feasible to do on a regular basis, we're gonna to have to make compensation requests parsable so that we can just run a script and get a breakdown of how much BSQ was issued in each function and what was achieved with each issuance. So I'm gonna make a project for that in the next few days so that we can get started on that and hopefully get that done in this cycle and get that in motion this cycle and then we can start building on top of that to do some more advanced reporting. The other thing, increased trade sizes is something I mentioned before uh, so here we have fiat trade sizes for the past two years. You can see that there was a pretty marked drop off when account signing, well, in April of 2019. So that's when the exploits happened and trading had to be limited to 0.01 Bitcoin. And then October of 2019, is when account signing was implemented. And it, you can see it never really recovered. Uh, account signing, I think, I don't have the numbers. I think uh, Christoph did some analysis on this. It seems like it's been working relatively well overall and that people have been getting signed. But as you can see, the data doesn't really show a, a marked increase in trade sizes. Certainly nothing like what we had before. You know, trade sizes were double pretty much before than what they are now. Uh, you, there were months, many months where the average trade size for fiat was 0.08 Bitcoin or more. And now we're, we're lucky to hit 0.04. So this does vary across market. Like the British pound trades tend to be bigger than USD or Euro trades, but overall it's not a great picture and we need to figure out how to do that. Altcoin trade sizes, uh, seem to correlate with volume. I don't know why that would be, but uh, these months that you see of 2019, like middle of the year, June, July, August, these were like super high trading volume months for Monero. And you can see the trade sizes were also much higher during that time. I don't really have much to say here aside from just pointing out the trend. Uh, one other trend to note here is that in these same months, the proportion of trades that were instant trades were like huge. So in these same months of June, July, and August of 2019, I think it was like over 80 or 90% or something ridiculous. Some high proportion of these trades were instant one hour trades. Um, so that's just an interesting point, but it all goes back to increasing trade sizes uh, for Monero, for liquid Bitcoin and possibly uh, currency like JPY, which does not have a requirement for account signing and which has a pretty good smooth banking system to make payments quickly without chargeback risk. So that's all I have. Is there anything folks on the call would like to discuss, suggest, ask about, recommend? Oh yes, I would like to say about the kindness part. If there is any way to there's someone or anyone else to do some, you know, guidance to 
updates on my list. Um, how to run Chinese biscuit? Is there any way to you know solve this kind of uh, issue? So guidance specifically around how to use BISC? Yes, how to use and uh, basically to explain how the software of BISQ, uh, their you know, setting, everything inside it. I, I believe so. Well, let me let me ask you: Is the, do you think do you think the user base in China would prefer? Is there a preference of video or text? Do you think videos would be uh, better or text would be better? Some Chinese user, I believe, who the Chinese user who will use BISQ will more like to use text, and a video version is also okay for them. I can do both if possible. Okay. The reason I'm asking is that we we just made a new playlist of how to use BISQ, and I'm wondering for, these are videos, so I'm wondering if 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 it if it might be easier to translate those videos and so make translate the yes. video subtitles. Yes, I believe so. I believe so. It can be translated, and uh, it will be a great way. And uh, if at the same time uh, there is some problem in China, so I believe the guidance, the text uh, version of the guidance need to add something, you know, because of the Chinese Great War. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's about the guidance part. I, I would like to ask some, you know, like guidance job if possible. Okay. Well, okay. I'll get in touch with you after the call. I'll send you the videos and maybe if you could take a look at them and see if, if there's a chance you think they might be helpful, then yes. um, maybe we can start, uh, we, can st we can try to translate them. Okay. Cool. That'd be great. Yeah. Huey, you, you were asking about trade sizes? Yes. Yes, I, I was wondering if there is any way to do more, you know, like uh, developing Chinese market. Uh, I believe it's not enough to let Chinese market grow from now on. And uh, I think it, if, if it is possible, I can do more you know, like a kind of a growth to Chinese market. And uh, I believe maybe I can create uh, like uh, 20 or 13 purchase per month in the future. And if it's possible. Yeah, you, you, you're, uh, you're asking about like another bounty kind of thing? Yes. Yeah, we could talk about it. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't be opposed to it uh, at the moment. We, with the uh, the Latin American effort, we're spending about a thousand dollar U.S. dollars per month on that. Um, so we have a little bit of a limited limited budget, but uh, we can, yeah, we can we can explore that. Maybe uh, talk about maybe doing another bounty. Yes, yes, I believe so. And Chinese market so far, I've seen. There's a lot of issue need to be fixed, but the mobile app will be definitely most helpful if if it's being released. That's almost all about my part. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So Hugh is asking about trade sizes. You said you would increase the trade amounts to what value? Oh, uh, I was referring to. I want to increase trade sizes. So uh, I don't want to, like, the limits will still be what they are, but I'd like to somehow either introduce payment methods that allow for bigger trade sizes or focus, will probably also focus on, on markets that are just naturally bigger or would naturally have bigger trades. So Monero is one of them. Liquid Bitcoin might be another one. And as I mentioned, JPY is, is another one that does not require signing that should, on average, have bigger trade sizes as well. So I'm not looking to change anything in the software. I just want to focus on places that should have bigger trade sizes to begin with. Uh, and then also within, um, so like USD and Euro, I think, 
there might be some payment methods that we're not looking at that were uh, that that might enable higher trade sizes too. So I saw you raise your hand. Would you like to feel free to speak if you like? Um, hi. Hey. Um, well, uh, for fiat trades, uh, the, the the table you displayed uh, is not separating the the zero point zero one bitcoins and the other. So, when you uh, start to do uh, the signing accounts, it's logic that the that this mean goes down. I mean, That's if you point. separate. <laughs> Yeah. If, if 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 you separate, um, if you leave out, if you remove the zero point zero one trades, we should have mm -hmm. uh, maybe zero point zero eight Bitcoin mean of trading, and it would be just normal. That's a good point. Maybe I'll, I'll do another analysis uh, with and, with uh, and, yeah. and, and also uh, we should compare it with fiat volume because um, if you trade two bitcoins but that these two bitcoins is two hundred dollars but then the, the the price of bitcoin goes to ten thousand uh, the trade sizes could be different also i mean people trade in in fiat terms mostly right right yeah that's true so maybe we should be looking at USD denominated volume or euro denominated volume instead of BTC. And and then about the the instant trades for for um, for altcoins. Yeah. Um. Maybe uh, there was something that made these instant trades not so instant. I don't know what could be this, but uh, if you perceive that the instant trades are not instant. Maybe this uh, this makes people use it less. I mean, maybe. I, I mean, for me, it's not. Um, I understand that people mm, doing high trades, high size trades, want to do instant trades because that what that's what traders do. Right. Yeah. I mean, I also have a. I, I can't prove this. But, but it but seems I, like I, I, okay. I don't know if they um, they don't do it because it's uh, not instant or just they don't use instant trades because there are less people wanting to trade to Bitcoin for altcoins. Maybe it's maybe it's both. Yeah, I also have um, uh, a little concern that it might have that the new trade protocol might have made a difference. Because if you look at the, the graph, like the graph on the screen right now, then the new trade protocol was introduced right where everything dropped off and it hasn't really recovered. And 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 I know from from talking to folks that approximately half of mediation cases right now are from Monero. But if you look at the, the number of trades, Monero is anywhere from like a quarter to a tenth of the number of trades every day. And yeah. so there could be, I haven't seen this on Reddit or Telegram, but there, there could be a, a hesitation to trade Monero on BISC just overall because of the new trade protocol. I don't know. Yes, yes, that, that might be. For me, to me, waiting 10 days to solve a dispute, it's, it's too much, it's too much. Yeah. And you, I mean, instant trades, okay, if everything goes right, right. But that can be tipped anyway with with a normal trade, so you don't mind uh, uh, attending to 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 someone to get your offer, to take your offer. You, you just you just made a, a normal a normal uh, trade, and you don't have the pressure that being able to answer in one hour. Yeah, there's some discussion about about addressing. Uh, the trade protocol. I don't know if there's anything yes, firm yet. Yes, I'm, but... I'm waiting to for that. What are these changes? <laughs> because I don't yeah. have any clue what could be yeah. changing with this. Yeah. 
we'll see. Hugh, is your, your mic working by any chance? Yes, I think so. Oh, there we go. OK, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my point was that for XMR, for example, the limit right now is two Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. So what would be the new limit? Oh, no, same limit. So I don't want to change it. But I just want to encourage more XMR trades. That's all. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Yeah, I'm I mean, because, you know, we, we're have, we have, what, like half, even a quarter of the XMR trades right now that we did, you know, a year ago. So mm -hmm. I just, I just want to get back to those levels. That's all. OK, OK. But I, I also think that before we get there, I think we might have to fix the speed resolution. I really think that might be limiting these XMR trades in the first place. So, because I mean, if you think about it, if we had like going back to what I just said before of half, if you assume that half of mediation cases right now are for XMR, which is what I've been told is the case right now, then if we had the, you know, 2000 Bitcoin a month, or what, what is it, the 2000, uh, yeah, 2000 Bitcoin a month of XMR trades. If you took, if half of those trades had to go to, or not half of those trades, but if the same proportion of those trades had to go to mediation that that's happening right now, I don't think we could handle it. I don't think dispute resolution, mediation, arbitration could handle that volume of XMR uh, disputes. So it's almost a good thing, I think, that, <laughs> that we don't have such high volume right now. In, in XMR, but if we want to grow, we, we're going to have to figure out how to get it back. I so. also think that that it's the same people that are generating most of the the volume, so mm -hmm. maybe the drop in the volume maybe because their funds are locked in mediation. So before yeah. uh, it would be solved quite quickly because the arbitrator would have a, a multi-seek key, so they could release the the funds. But right now, it's up to 10 days, so maybe it's that. Yeah, so that's very mm -hmm. One person could have, could have made 10 offers. Now they can do that with the current protocol. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no price you pay either. Because the mediator, you know, Wiz has talked about this a lot. You're as a mediator, if you you uh, suggest that one of the traders should agree to a lower payout, for for example, if he if he paid late or whatever, why would he accept it? He has no he has no you know he can wait five or ten days and lose the same amount of money. Uh, yeah, yeah it's just it's not great. So yeah, so some of the some of the things that are being talked about are somehow somehow have like more than one delayed payout transaction where you know the person if they decide to wait, they lose more money the more they wait. I don't know practically how that would work, but something like that I think might might help if, if implemented well. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any anything else you guys would like to cover? All right. Well, thank you guys for joining and we'll see you around. Take care. Okay. Thank you.